Hello Akuma fans, this is Charlie with the Gossiger Applications staff with another tip for you on Akuma P300 and P200 mill machines. I had a request come across my desk from a customer who wanted to have a little help understanding the Akuma.lib files. These are a group of macros that all reside within a single program that can be registered with the control and allow you to do certain things such as custom tool change cycles or if you have uh, touch setter uh, tool setters or spindle probes you can install these as well and they will control the uh, probing macros let's just take a quick look at what the structure of the program is since we have multiple macros within a single file we have to start the, uh, the program with the letter O and then whatever code we're going to use to call the individual program in this case G116 and then the end of the program we'll use the code RTS which is similar to a FANUC M99 which simply means that's the end of this particular section and go back to your main system then you'll notice here we're starting a, a new macro and by utilizing the RTS the machine knows that if you call up, in this case, G112, it will execute the program from this line here and will dump out of the macro routine and go back to the regular system program when it reads RTS. Once you've got that complete, then we need to allocate a buffer size for these uh, for these programs to reside in the control. This is a similar procedure between the P300 that you see in front of you and a P200 style control. What we're looking for is a soft key down at the bottom that will say library program. In my case I need to arrow over one time and there's my library program. When I touch F3 I have a display block which will show me any macros that are currently registered in the control. It'll also show me a reserved space in my buffer where uh, I'm allocating the size of buffer to be utilized for macros. I don't want to make this a huge number because it does take away from my operational program buffer but I do need to make it large enough that the uh, allocation is larger than the actual size of the programs. If you don't make this number large enough, we'll get an alarm when we try to register these programs saying, hey, it just won't fit in. And also, as, uh, as you may discover, if this buffer allocation is too close to the actual size of the library programs you're fitting in, you'll lose this registration when you cycle power on the machine. The operation will appear to go well while you have the power on, but as soon as you cycle power you lose all of these. If any of that is the case, we're going to make our buffer size larger than what your current allocation is. In order to do that, I'm simply going to touch buffer size F4 and I'll key in a value, a number of bytes that I want to allocate. I find that 120,000 is generally enough for what I'm doing, but it doesn't restrict my uh, uh, operational buffer too badly. Once I have that in place, now I'm going to initialize the buffer, or the, I'm sorry, the program library, just to erase anything that's there. Uh, in this case, I didn't have anything, but I'd like to see that step anyway. Then the final step is to click on F1 register and it shows me my machine directory one and the LIB files that we have dedicated to that. I'm going to select them one at a time and say OK and it then delineates the programs that I have. I will register the second and a third if I have it and now those library files are in place. By doing that, I do not have to cycle power on the control to uh, have it read the LIB files. They are already registered. Everything's happy. A little footnote for you. These do have to remain in your machine directory one at all times, so I do suggest that you protect them. Put the little, uh, uh, put the little padlock on there so that they can't be edited or deleted. Also, if you are in the process of modifying one of these LIB files, if I make a change in this file, I need to repeat this entire process. If I change this, say, to G117 instead of G116, quit, stop, and save it, I'll have to go back to 
the library program tab, initialize to get rid of everything there, and then run through that registration process one more time in order to have the edits that I just made become active. Once I've done all of that, if I'm expecting the machine to call one of these macros through an M or a G code, I'll also have to come over to my parameter page and do the F8 display change. And right here, I've got the G and M code macro code page. So these are the G's and the M's that I can use to call something. And what I'll need to do is highlight the M code that I'm expecting to use. And then I will set the program name in that library file that I'm using for this. So for instance, M201, I could say the name of it is OM201, and then everybody's happy as long as the um, the code that I'm using to call it up is uh, matches what's in that registration file. Hope this helps you out. If you have any problems with it, please feel free to call your local Gossiker application staff and we'll be happy to help. Thanks.